Hi, I'm reading from my new book, The Rose Throne. This is the meeting between Princess Marlissa and Duke Kellen. King Jop of Weirland led his daughter, Princess Marlissa, into the throne room. A man stood when they entered. He was tall with broad shoulders and long legs. He was dressed in a long, thick wool cloak that was adorned with pearls along the edge, and he seemed utterly untouched by the wear of the weeks of tra travel he would have endured on the journey here. It made Issa more conscious of her own worn tweed gown, the edges of her sleeves dirty from her work in the garden early that morning, the skirt with a tear to one side. Issa glanced up and saw Duke Kellen observing her every movement. There was a kind of arrogance in the set of his mouth and in the point of his chin. He seemed to Issa everything that she would have expected from a nobleman of King Hycor's court. He was younger than she had expected, but perhaps King Hycor had run out of older, more experienced men. It was said that his favorites died with a frightening regularity. King Jop, said Kellen with a formal bow. Then he turned to her, Princess Marlissa. He bowed again and held out his hand. Issa gave him her own hand. When he kissed it, the sensation was strangely cold. Did he think she would marry him because he was handsome and powerful in King Hycor's court? I come to you with gifts from King Hycor. The Duke offered Issa a small velvet bag. To match the shine of your eyes, he added. Inside the bag was an emerald the size of a hummingbird's egg. Issa had never seen anything so valuable. Despite herself, she was impressed with the gift. King Hycor must truly value Duke Kellen if he was willing to send such a gift to the woman Kellen hoped to marry. Issa could have used her newir to reach inside the faint veins of life inside the emerald and expand the flaws that lay deep within. It would crumble to dust in her hands if she wished it, but she resisted the impulse and instead glanced at her father to see if, he sh if she should accept it. King Jop nodded, so Issa held the emerald in the palm of her hand. It was beautiful indeed, and it was worth half the castle, she had no doubt. And this, Kellen said, to bring you the sweetest smell of summer even in the dark of winter. He handed her a tiny box, which, when opened, let out a strong scent of lavender. It was not soap, but a candle. A gift from a man who knew nothing of the newir, she thought. If she had wished to have the scent of any summer flower in winter, she could bring it up from the bank newir in the earth itself. She set the candle gently on the table. Finally, a gift from Prince Eddick himself, said Duke Kellen, holding out a tiny metal figure. From Prince Eddick. Issa took the gift at her father's nod and held it up to the light. It was a female figure dressed in a simple shift, holding a peace lantern. The details were exquisite. I thank you, said Issa politely. I shall keep these gifts close to my heart. Though she did not understand why Duke Kellen had brought a gift from the king as well as the young prince, why would Kellen not bring something from his own estate if he wished to offer her a personal touch? Perhaps you should begin at the beginning, Duke Kellen, King Jop suggested. He took this all more seriously than Issa did, it seemed. The princess would like to hear all of the details of the betrothal. Duke Kellen glanced at Issa. Of course, he said. I have come to offer a betrothal between you and young Prince Eddick of Rurik, your highness. And suddenly Issa was no longer amused or puzzled. A betrothal with Prince Eddick of Rurik. Her father might have warned her. Prince Eddick is a child, Issa said, struggling to keep her voice calm. She knew that much of the ruling family of Rurik. He is twelve years old and will soon be thirteen, Duke Kellen answered. He has already begun to show the wealth of Tower that is, is his inheritance as the son of King Hygor, and his father believes that he is ready to be betrothed. Of course, the wedding will not take place until he is of age, at eighteen. Of course, e echoed Issa, though there had been stranger marriages than this one in the history of the two kingdoms. Your father has a portrait of the prince, which King Hycor has sent to you, added Duke Helen. At this, Issa looked up, and King Jot passed a miniature portrait. Issa saw a boy with dark hair and small features. She hoped that the grim, grim expression was the painter's attempt to make him look more martial, for it does not seem to fit the rest of the figure at all. He is every inch his father's son, said Duke Kellen, as if that were something that would sway Issa in the boy's favor. She looked at King Jot, but his expression told her nothing. What else can you tell me of the prince? Issa asked, turning to Duke Kellen. He is well-mannered, a little shy of court as yet, though he is still young and will grow into his place. He reads widely and has a good hand. I'm sure you will see that when you read his letters. He has already learned the elements of combining swordplay with Tawir and practices daily with the king's guard. When would the betrothal take place? asked Issa. On the first day of autumn in the new year, said Kellen, that would give enough time for the preparations to take place and for the negotiations to be complete. In little more than a year's time she would be betrothed to a thirteen-year-old boy? Issa could not imagine it. And it will be in Rurik, not in Weirland, said Issa? Yes, of course. Of course, because Rurik was a more powerful kingdom. 
so I shall be coming to Rurik before the betrothal, asked Issa. You will come next summer, so that you and Prince Eric will have a few months to become acquainted with each other. Though by then the arrangements for the betrothal would be done, there would be no chance for either of them to change his or her mind. No, this was the moment of decision. Once Issa gave Duke Helen her agreement, there would be no turning back, no matter how she found the prince in person. This is what her father had meant when he had told her he had sheltered her from responsibilities. And now she must decide. I hope you enjoy the rest of the book.